Hello everyone. This is an experiment. Um, I was asked by a few people if I could document the process of how I've serviced these machines. I am, um, I've tried a few different ways of um, videotaping the process that it takes to bring these machines back to life, but I find it interferes a lot with the process um, and it's, it's just, it comes a burden to have to move the tripod around constantly. So this is another way of doing it. I got a high quality um, webcam camera with microphone uh, that I will leave rolling for the duration of the process of servicing this machine. So instead of doing the video editing and um, coming up with a narration that fits the bits, um, I'm just going to show you on the go what I do with these machines. So it's going to be a long lengthy video, it's going to be in chapters because I won't finish this machine today, but I hope it will help some of you on bringing your machines back to life. I'll make sure to talk about it, about what I'm doing here and there. Um, the lighting isn't perfect. Maybe I will improve that in a bit, but I hope this is, regardless of that, a way for me to help you with any problems you might encounter with your machines. Don't know if this is going to work. Like I said, it's an experiment. I'll see how popular it becomes. Um, if it is a thing that picks up, I will continue doing it. Because um, typewriter, typewriter and the mechanics... Um, the repair, the art thereof, is a dying trade. There's not many people that know how to service these machines anymore. Um, there is a small percentage of the young population that has taken up on repairing these typewriters and the methods have changed. Uh, not saying necessarily for worse, it's just things don't last if they're not talked and talked about and shown. The art of typewriter repair, it is really something different. Um, compared to uh, conventional uh, mechanics such as an automobile, uh, vintage radios, uh, television repair, anything like that. All of them come with different hazards, all of them come with different challenges, and so do typewriters for that matter. Um, so, again, I hope this video was beneficial to you. If you've left with any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments section. Let me know what you think of this, and we'll go forward with the results. I hope you enjoy it. Now, onwards to the topic of conversation in this project. This is a late 50s, early 60s Royal FP standard typewriter. I picked up at Value Village for about $15. Um, it needs extensive repair. It is in really rough condition. It has uh, corrosion, it has whiteout marks. Uh, dead critters in it, dust and dirt, and it definitely at this t it, as the way it sits now, it's a boat anchor. Um, but I do really love Royal typewriters. I have quite a few of them throughout the generations. Uh, the earliest one I got is from the early teens. The latest one I've ever had was a Royal 470, which I believe was from a 1981. Um, I have yet to come across a Royal Standard Typewriter I really don't like. I even have a humongous Hermes, or Hermes, a Royal Empress, uh, I think it's from 65, that type 6 characters per inch, and I absolutely love it. So, I don't know what my goal is with this particular typewriter. Again, I picked it up for $14 because I felt sorry for it, also because I don't mind the challenge, and it does have a... Um, color other than gray. These machines were mostly produced in a two-tone gray scheme. And then there was a site market for um, uh, these typewriters that were pink, blue, yellow, green. I'd love to find a yellow one. I have yet to find a yellow one, but I have a pink one I've had for years that was given to me by a former neighbor. And now I just found this one a couple of months ago. So, um, yeah, we're going to get to work. I already took out a few screws, which is why the cover is loose. All in all, there is, doesn't appear to be any physical damage other than the corrosion. Um, it's not necessarily a high mileage machine. I am missing the caps key and the caps lock key, and I don't know if I'm going to be able... If I have a spare one, I might have to get creative with that. I think I got some ones, but they're from a Royal HH, and they're different. So, push comes to shuffle, fire those on there. Don't know what my plans are with this typewriter. It is too rough really to sell uh, or to bring back to a condition where it's worth any money. Um, so I might get creative with it. Just like my Royal Empress, which is really not all that much of a desirable machine. The fun thing you can do with these machines is get creative with paint and such. And uh, brings bring it back to a, you know, a way that it's really a, you can really appreciate it. 
because currently it's uh, it's rough, no doubt about it. So first course of uh, first step um, course in action is that we're going to take apart the body paneling. This is part of the frame, so that doesn't come off. We're going to pop out the side panels, take off the front cover and the ribbon cover, um, and then I might go as far as taking off the carriage, which is a project in itself. It's too big to put on the Lazy Susan. Forgive the quality of the video if you can't see any details in particular. If there's something you're uh, left in the dark about, let me know. I will um, get back to it and show you an in-depth review of whatever you need me to explain to you. And again, these videos are going to be in chapters because servicing one of these typewriters, it is a lengthy process. Now, Royal typewriters over the years, they haven't really changed all that much in design. Um, by the time the Royal 10 came on the market in 1913, they introduced a mechanism that they really stuck with, if you think about it, for a good 70 years, almost. And of course there were changes over time to improve the design, but in its core, the machine maintained. And they are just well-built machines. They're not of superb high quality per se. Um, I mean they are American made and I find that typewriters resemble a lot the cars of the country that they were made in. You know you got the little Japanese typewriters that are like Hondas and Toyotas and they're dead simple and they're not necessarily of a well-built material but they'll go on and on and on and I've yet to come across a brother typewriter I haven't been able to make work and then the Americans yeah they did the same thing you know they're big and bulky and sometimes a lot of plastic was involved and um, they were much larger in some cases than they needed to be. I mean, the, the joke of the Royal Empress is that you can put a gun in the flask of whiskey underneath the ribbon cover because there's that much space between the mainframe of the machine and the, back, the body panels. Um, and then the Germans with their complicated mechanisms and their um, fluid maybe. But they're complicated mechanisms and their extravagant eye for detail. stripped already from someone going at it before me. This is the brace that holds the um, there it goes. The um, ribbon color selector as well as the front body panel on simultaneously. And you got the bracket you can turn that away. You know, it's funny, I'm an artist. I love to do my cityscape sketches, drawings. I can completely delve into the detail and really submerge myself in uh, the work. It's a way to escape. And typewriters really are no different than that. At least for me. Yeah, it's. Uh, a way for me to forget my troubles and the worries in the world and just tinker, zone out. 
And there's so many people out there who don't have such an escape and are constantly confronted with their hardships. And I don't know if it takes to be an artist in order to have something like that, but it is very good for your mental health to have an escape. It's a front panel there. By the time I've disassembled this thing, you folks will all have a bit of a better insight into what makes this machine work. Some of you might ask, why in God's name do you bother repairing this rust bucket of a royal when you can pick up a nice one relatively easy. I mean these machines were mass produced. And that is because I believe no typewriter I mean that's 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 my love, right? That's my my niche. No typewriter should go um unsaved. They don't longer make them. They haven't made them for years. These old machines if we don't take care of them now soon we're not gonna have any of these so I feel it's my duty to repair every one of them that I come across unconditionally except for an Olivetti Linea 88 that I'm not doing again and not that they're mechanically bad it's just there has to be one to hate and that would be mine the Olivetti Linea 88 is something that should have never happened I'm not a huge Olivetti fan to begin with. Most people know that, but know me. You know, in the way in the ways of typewriters. Um, yes, they were interestingly designed aesthetically. This is not coming out. But when it came to uh, the mechanics, I just I don't enjoy. I don't like the feel of them. I don't like working on them. I can abstain from working on them. Even the portables, I will do so. But each to their own, right? This one's going to be a problem because it's stripped. It's a six-sided screw, so I might be able to get a socket going here and use that instead. Let's see. So for you who care, the four screws that hold on the um, the bracketry for the ribbon cover, it's a one-fourth ratchet socket. And then you don't need a flat head to undo them. Let's see if this will break it free. There we go. First one, you don't have to take the screws all the way out because there's the uh, the large notches that you can slide them right out. I'm gonna put this over here. I've got too much stuff going on here. I'm just gonna put some stuff away. In my way.
I don't think a single workbench out there is large enough for if you, you know, for anyone if you've got enough projects on the go. There we go. So if you want to take out your platinum on your royal standard, there's a little not use on most machines there's a lever underneath the right carriage knob you pull that and then this flap will come forward and you can pull out your platen like that sometimes though they're screwed in place so if you don't have it make sure you see a screw there um saves you having to undo the carriage knobs or anything like that this one actually stays in take out the feet rollers because through there I can see what the condition is of the escapement and if that's bad the carriage is coming off although the machine works despite its condition You gotta love these large feet rollers. The one on the Empress is that big. It's impressive. And then you get your four feet rollers here. Now they slide, but there's only one way they can go in, so it's not a big deal. does look pretty good. For any of you working on your typewriters, if you don't have to take off the carriage, don't bother because it is quite a chore. And looking at this one, the escapement gear has some wear on the teeth, but the rack is good and the star wheel is good. Tap gear is worn too, but it should be fine. Escapement's all good. I might opt to not take the carriage off this machine because it is serviceable from here relatively easy. Um, I can go at it from the underside, although the springs are in the way on this machine. Taking off this side panel though should give me easy access. So, no, I'm probably not going to take the carriage off. All in all, I think the overall um, poor condition of the machine is from it sitting in circumstances that contributed. Um, it does not look like it was abused. Um, every covered component is relatively clean. So, I should be able to work with it as is. So the next steps are going to take off the panels underneath the carriage, take off the back panel, and go from there.
So I can already hear that the ribbon drive is um, not happy because the way these machines work is that the main clock spring in the back of the machine also drives the ribbon advance mechanism in these typewriters. Royals from the KMM onwards had that. Uh, actually, no, maybe even the KHM had it already. Um, the problem is, is that once these advance, uh, the ribbon advance gets gummed up over time, it starts to skip. Um, and if you advance the carriage too many times, you can actually strip the gear and then it's not going to be fixable it's just going to sit there going click 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 and it won't advance your ribbon and at that point you're going to have to replace the gear because it is easier set or easier done than you think in order to strip the the drive gear for the ribbon advance in these machines and that is a shaft that runs underneath the right at the left side of the typewriter um, I can see it right here and it also pivots up and down and that will determine which way the ribbon is rotating by that point if you strip that gear you're gonna have to take out the shaft the drive gear and you probably we it depends which ends you strip because if you strip on the um, mainspring you're gonna have to figure something out for that too I've seen those get worn out um, probably one of the only weak spots I can think of in a royal standard is the ribbon advance driving these because they do have a tendency to go bad mostly by uh, uh, in other words, cause my improper use. This machine is a burden for stuck screws. It's absolutely the worst. Paint is absolutely horrible. I actually chipped away part of the frame on the bottom because there's a rust spot there. I'm a little bit concerned about it. The problem with this is the uh, aluminum casting that the machine is built within. Um, it doesn't rust as metal wood to where it turns brown, but the thing is it grows soft. So um, I don't know if you can see it in the video here, but there's a spot where the paint is gone and there's this white substance and it's actually oxidizing of the aluminum. Um, some typewriters you also get, you get the smelly feet um, syndrome. That is, in my opinion, almost worse than the rust, the, the conventional rust you used to see on typewriters because that at least is somewhat treatable. You can sand it and, 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 and get rid of it largely with the aluminum. It weakens the metal considerably. And there is quite a bit of this on one side of the machine, so I'm going to have to look into that. But for now, I'm going to have to see if I can get this damn screw out because it is stuck. There we go. I'm going to pop a shoulder here in a minute. And taking off these covers will give me access to the undercarriage components, the backspace mechanism, the tabulator, the U-bar, and the escapements. All of that needs to be serviced. By servicing, I need I mean these panels go on last because we reassemble the typewriter, take it for a spin, and based on that, we're going to fine-tune the escapement to uh, the degree is still possible because these machines have seen a lot of use over the years, and they will you know like everything they wear you can only fine-tune them so much before you can't now taking off so many screws I might actually put some back in place so I know where they go there's one panel such as this one I'm gonna put that one over here you see royal thought of everything because if you look there's a little screw and it looks, it looks like it's wearing a hat and that is actually a notch where you can put the draw band if you decide to take the carriage off. I'm going to integrate a little serviceability there. Ergonomically Royals are some of the best machines made especially with the introduction of the magic margin. That was, that was a good design. Mind you, I've come across a lot of typewriters, and I recently serviced a Hermes Ambassador. Now, for you that don't know what it is, it is a full-size Hermes typewriter that was introduced, I think, mid-40s, mid-40s. I believe they are a post-war machine. And they went through a few changes, but they were made into the 80s. 
And um, no, I'm not going to say which is better because I don't know at this stage. I haven't made up my mind yet, but I have really grown to like the Hermes Ambassador over, for example, an Olympia SG-1, which ironically is what I traded it for. I had an Olympia SG-1, there was a fellow who liked the typeface and he wanted it, and he said, well, I've got a Hermes Ambassador, you're welcome to have. And since I already had about four of them, I said, sure, let's go for it. Turned out to be an excellent decision, because I love that machine. And they're not very common in this area. I've uh, seen three in my time. One was a machine, was a, was an or, or early one from the 50s that had the black round keys. It looks like a tank, really. And then I saw a one of the second generation green ones, which were from the late 60s. But it was missing a few keys and the, car the back panel on the machine so I passed on especially considering they wanted $65 for it at the time and I'm talking about six seven years ago and then this one came on my path a year and a half two years ago and it was complete it was not in perfect condition but good enough for me to take it okay I'm missing a bushing here Luckily, these bushings you can get at Home Depot, so it should be good. Someone's gone through this already because there used to be foam-based sound deadening material in here, and that's gone. Now, it does uh, degrade over time, but it takes your hand to run through it in order for it to come off. It doesn't just fall off. So, someone's been through this machine already, and based on the uh, strip screws, I'd say it at least has seen some service in its time. Now I blew this thing out already with the air compressor, but there's still so much left I might take it out again. And here in the back we got the magic margin system, so instead of having the sliders that you would have on a conventional typewriter, you got the magic margin levers here on the side, and you say that's where I want my right margin to be, I go click, and there it is. That noise. You hear the click click? That's the gear and the ribbon advance. Something to keep look out for because me doing that is not going to harm it. But if you leave it and you use the machine and use the machine and use the machine, what will happen is as you strip the gear, it will um, it'll be more prone to start doing that. And you'll reach a point where not enough lubrication or no fine tuning is going to prevent it from happening. Your ribbon advance won't work at all, but it's not going to be happy doing it. So it's always good to keep uh, an eye out for things like that. Push comes to shove, there are plenty, plenty of parts machines out there, and you want to find a better one, you can always do that. Or just repair the machine. Such as what I'm doing now. So, I'm not one to follow a schedule or a plan when I build these things. I go as I go. One of the weird things I'm going to do now is see if I can actually get rid of the blotches here on the side. Because this machine, aesthetically, is pretty harmed. And it comes right off. But I see rust bubbles all over this machine. This was a car, I wouldn't buy it, that's for sure. If it was my car, I'd be a little concerned. Although you should see what I drive. Let's not even go there. Positively, positively. I love my car, but I can assure you it's not something that a dealership wants out front. Missing the padding. <sighs> mm. What 
don't know if it's fitting a KMG. Got a KMG in the storage locker and it's missing a side panel. There's one missing one side panel. Nah. Let's get this thing on the road. You know, it's machines like these, I service them up because I like the job, right? I earn a bit of money repairing my typewriters. I even call it the side business because that's what it is. I get regular business for people that need to typewriter service. There's only so many people that do it. Um, but I don't really make my money back for the time put in it. And I am okay with that because, you know, it's my hobby. It's not my business and there is a difference. And if you have a store, that's different, right? If you've got overhead, that's that's you need you're in it to make money. I'm not in this to make money. It's nice to get it because it gives me more money to buy more machines or to buy nicer machines or pay the gas it takes to drive out to machines I want, but I'm not in it for the money. So if I say, okay, well, you know what? I charge you so much money and this you know worth twice to twice that in work I'm not really willing to take that very hard because another machine saved and I got to spend some time in the shop if any of you, if any of you out there have a hobby where you can be as passionate about as I am about my typewriters you're a lucky person too many people out there who work and work and work and are out in it for the money and strive for their pension and their retirement and they forget to stop and smell the roses as they say and enjoy the things that you do such as with these and I got a regular job but I make prior I make this a priority too I make sure there's time for these things as well now this is going to be the first of a series of videos. I'm going to cut it here and upload this one first. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, I can make changes as I go because we're not done yet. This video was initially just to strip the machine to a point where I can start cleaning it. Um, and we'll go from here. So I hope this was a, a good start and beneficial to you. And I look forward to hearing what you think of it and how we'll go forward with this.